All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Sandra Alfons. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Modern and Classical Languages at Western Washington University in Bellingham. It's in Washington State, and I also direct the Ray Walpole Institute for the Study of the Holocaust, Genocide, and Crimes Against Humanity at Western. Welcome to our webinar, Breaking the Pact of Forgetting, the Franco Dictatorship and Historical Memory in Spain. I'm delighted to facilitate the conversation between Dr. Alejandro Bea and filmmaker Gunther Schweiger on his 2005 documentary, Santa Cruz por Ejemplo, which we streamed online this past week. Even though we are meeting in cyberspace and are not meeting face to face, I would like to begin by acknowledging that both the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at the University of Minnesota, our partner for this event, and the Wolpo Institute at Western Washington University stand on native lands. The University of Minnesota on Minnesota Makoche, the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary homelands of the Dakota Oyate, and Western Washington University on the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary homelands of the Coast Salish people, namely the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack tribe. We call upon our participants today to reflect upon this fact and to acknowledge the sovereignty and spiritual ownership for their homelands, their place of origin on which we come together to learn. Thank you to everyone who helped make this webinar a reality today, in particular to Joe Eggers, Jeff Perdue, Julia Mitterlerner, and Sheila Pennell. So a little bit about our structure. Um, after the introduction of our speakers, Dr. Baer will start the presentation by providing some historical context for our conversation about the memory of the Franco dictatorship in Spain and the work of the Association for the Recovery of Historical Memory. And from there, we will launch into a conversation about the documentary that you saw. And we will have time for a Q&A at the end of our conversation. And you can use the chat function for that. And now let's do introductions. Gunther Schweiger is an award-winning filmmaker, writer, and producer whose short films and documentaries have shown at national and international film festivals. He has also directed theater and opera. Originally from Salzburg, Austria, Gunther Schweiger lives and works in Madrid, Spain. His films include Santa Cruz, por ejemplo, 2005, El Paraíso de Hafna, 2007, Arena, 2009, La Maleta de Marta, 2013. And if you see the poster in the back of his chat room there, uh, there is a poster for that, uh, for that film. And uh, Desde que el mundo es mundo, 2015. His first feature film, The Diver Inside, premiered in 2019. And he is currently working on a new documentary on Adolf Hitler's birthplace, Braunau. Gunther Schweiger is a member of the European Film Academy and the Film Academies of Austria and Spain. Welcome, Gunther. So glad you're here with us today. Dr. Alejandro Bea is Associate Professor of Sociology and the Director of the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at the University of Minnesota. After completing his PhD at the Universidad Complutense in Madrid, he held positions at universities in Madrid, Bayreuth, and Munich. His current research interests cover transitional justice and memory politics after mass violence, the cultural processing of colonial genocides, and anti-Semitism, with a particular focus on Spain and the Spanish-speaking world. His publications include the books Holocausto, Recuerdo y Representación, 2006, El Testimonio Audiovisual, Imagen y Memoria del Holocausto, 2005, and Memory and Forgetting in the Post-Holocaust Era, The Ethics of Never Again, which he co-authored with Nathan Snyder in 2017. And in preparation for this webinar, you might have also read one of his many articles, this one in Memory Studies, Ghosts of the Holocaust and Franco's Mass Graves, Cosmopolitan Memories and the Politics of Never Again. So welcome, Alejandro. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us today. And Alejandro, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sandra. It's a, it's a pleasure to be part of this webinar uh, together with, with Gunther and you. And it's also 
a pleasure to collaborate with the World Post Center uh, on this event, and I hope this is the first of, of many other. Um, I would like to provide some um, historical context and uh, sociological background to the film that uh, we have watched and to the phenomenon of the historical memory of the recovery of historical memory in Spain. So I would, would like, to, like to talk very briefly about the Spanish Civil War, uh, these three periods, uh, Spanish Civil War, dictatorship and uh, democracy, including this liminal period between the death of Franco, the dictator, and the proclamation of the new constitution that uh, we understand as the transition, la transición, uh, in between 75 and 78. So the Spanish Civil War, this will be known by many of you, but just in case it might be helpful to provide a little bit of background on this. Um, it's a war that uh, started in July 18, 1936 with uh, military revolt against the Republican government of Spain. It was supported by conservative elements with a broad um, uh, portion of conservative elements within the country. And uh, the, this initial military coup failed to win control over the entire country and a bloody civil war ensued that was fought with great ferocity on both sides. The nationalists, as the rebels were called, received aid from fascist Italy and Nazi Germany. The Republicans received aid from the Soviet Union, as well uh, from the international brigades that were composed of volunteers from Europe and the United States. The war uh, was an outcome of increasing polarization in Spanish politics that had developed over the previous decades. And uh, very briefly, one could say that this was a breach that, or, or a cleavage or, or a, on, on three levels or around three fault lines. On the one hand, the social question, um, the landowners on the one side and workers' movement, the developing, growing workers' movement, socialists, anarchists, and communists that demanded land reform. The second question, the religious question, an uh, important divide between Catholics and secularists and a strong anti-clerical movement in Spain at the time. And the regional question, uh, uh, the tension between centralism and peripheral nationalism which is uh, also a question that is still lingering in present-day Spain. Spain, some of, and I would say that these three, three cleavages still play a role in present-day politics. Um, so you had on the one side the nationalists that were mostly Roman Catholics and important elements of the military, most landowners and uh, many businessmen on the nationalist side. On the other side, the Republicans were urban workers, agricultural laborers, and many of the educated middle class. However, the middle class was really divided between nationalists and republicans during the war. Um, the numbers of persons killed in the Spanish Civil War, which was a conflict that lasted three years, can only be roughly estimated. Um, the war left approximately 500,000 Spaniards dead, and thus, this does not include all those who died from uh, malnutrition, starvation, and other consequences of the war itself. And what's important to point out here is that up to 200,000 civilians were executed in the rear guard. This is an, a very large number. Most calculation estimate that around 50,000 executions were carried out in the Republican zone. And these deaths take into account the murders of members of rival political groups between communists and anarchists, or communists and Trotskyists, the Poem and the Communist Party. And uh, the number of the executions that took place in, place in the rebel uh, nationalist zone is uh, estimated at 150,000 during the war and importantly also uh, in the early post-war years between 39 and the early 40s. So uh, during the dictatorship, the numerous war victims belonging to the winning side, uh, including those that were illegally executed either by irregular troops or popular tribunals um, on the Republican side, were located, exhumed and uh, commemorated. And commemorated throughout the dictatorship in, in different ways. Uh, while the corpses of most of the defeated remained in unmarked uh, graves uh, throughout these entire periods and into the democratic 
periods in uh, by roadside cemeteries, etc. So this uh, brings us to the uh, democratic period, 1975. The dictator Franco, Francisco Franco, dies, um, and in uh, as I said, in 1978, a new uh, democratic constitution is approved, and. In contrast to the ways we, we currently understand democratization efforts, the success of Spain's transition uh, was predicated on the assumption that the past is the past, that it can indeed remain uh, the past and that silence is the key uh, to paving the way to peace and to democracy, which uh, is indeed uh, counterintuitive from today's perspective. But the fact is, that Spain rapidly transitioned from authoritarianism to uh, European democracy. It integrated into Europe. Spain became a member of the European Union in 1986. And uh, in these first two decades achieved uh, unprecedented economic prosperity. And all these changes took place with no attention paid to the crimes committed and the suffering inflicted by the Franco regime. Uh, as a result of this unwritten pact of oblivion, uh, the public presence of Francoist symbols uh, remained largely untouched. And uh, I grew up in, in Madrid during the years of, of the transition. And in my city, um, you had, as you had uh, in the entire country, numerous visible signs of dictatorship in Madrid. The, in the outskirts of Madrid, the Valley of the Fallen, this gigantic uh, mausoleum in which Franco, the dictator, was buried until only a few months ago, until approximately a year ago. And the entire country was decorated with monuments, statues of the dictator in parks and squares, uh, and plagues in memory of the fallen for God and for Spain, which honored only those who perished in the war on the Francoist side. And um, Günther's film also shows one of those monuments in. Uh, Santa Cruz. Um, I also remember quite well when I was a kid, uh, I received as part of my allowance the, the coin, the one peseta and five peseta coins. And uh, these coins had the, the engraving of Franco in, uh, in, in, on the coin with the words Francisco Franco, caudillo de España por la gracia de Dios, which means uh, Franco, leader of Spain by the grace of, of God. And what's uh, interesting is that this currency uh, will continue to be accepted as legal tender until the arrival of the euro, even if it was slowly removed from circulation um, during, during this period. Um, so when did the status quo started to be questioned? Uh, it was at the turn of the century. And uh, well, 20 years ago, just this week, the first uh, exhumation took place of uh, victims of Francoism, of those uh, that suffered the repression. And um, uh, so with the turn of the century, uh, and this important here is the rise of a, of a new generation that, that had come of age in a modern, European or modernized European Spain and a new generation that started to look at this past, at the war, at the dictatorship, and also the transition. And what they started to see at its shortcomings, at its unfulfilled promises, they started to look at this past uh, with fresh eyes, with a new perspective. In, 2000, these, uh, in the year 2000, these grassroots efforts began to locate and exhume mass graves of the Republican victims of the Civil War and the Franco regime. And a very strong social movement emerged, led by the Asociación por la Recuperación de la Memoria Histórica, ARMH, Association for the Recovery of Historical Memory. And this opened up intense debates about how uh, Spain, the way Spain had dealt, or rather not dealt with the dictatorship and its victims. And um, in that film, we also hear um, Paco Echevarria, the forensic, um, the forensic doctor who is in charge of the exhumation in Santa Cruz and so many others that says that the exhumations 
uh, of corpses provided explicit, undeniable material evidence of the uh, repressive policies put in place by Franco. Uh, so, in some, uh, many Spaniards started to look at the country's past as Europeans. And this involved playing catch up with Western Europe's direct engagement and openly public wrestling with the memory of their own history of fascism or collaboration with Nazism. So becoming European uh, meant critically revisit revisiting this, um, so to speak, Spanish Sonderweg, this exceptionalism regarding the transition to democracy. And um, part of this paradigm shift has also to do um, uh, with, with, with reframing uh, the discussion, adopting terms and, and ideas around transitional justice, victims' rights, memorialization that are consistent with other nations uh, on the continent. So while maybe just to end and then turn it over to, uh, to Günther, to, so we learn more about, about the film, uh, let me just say uh, one more thing that uh, especially you know, for us at the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies and the scholars involved in questions of, of mass violence and transitional justice, and I would say also that most memory activists across the globe will see uh, these developments that have taken in Spain over the last two decades as uh, necessary, as a basic requirement for democratic life. However, Spanish society seems to be afraid of confronting this difficult past. And we still see that there is no consensus around the question of memory in Spain. And I would leave it there and maybe we can engage more uh, thoroughly in the discussion of why this is taking place in, in, in the conversation or later in the Q&A. But um, turning it over to, to Günther, um, I would like to, to ask um, a question about the film that came out in 2005, which is the early period. It's, it's, it's the emergence of this memory movement. And my question is, what motivated you to do this film? And uh, how did you, yeah, what were your, your, your what, what was first your, what was your first, um, uh, yeah, your first approach uh, uh, to do this film? What, what, what uh, led you to do this film at this point? Gunther, we need to... Yeah, we can't hear you, Gunther. Can you unmute yourself, please? Can you unmute you? Yeah. Yes. Do you hear me? No, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we hear you. Yes. Okay. First of all, thank you for the invitation, and and uh, I'm very honored to be here and to to show the film and to to be part of this uh, webinar, which is a very interesting issue. And uh, regarding to your question, Alejandro, uh, my I, I'm Austrian, an Austrian filmmaker uh, living in Spain, and and. Um, for me as Austrian, it was always very important to, to, to try to understand why uh, in Spain people fought in the 30s uh, for the democracy against fascism. Because in my country, in Austria, uh, there was no fight against the Nazism. They accepted it. It's the same as in Germany. And it is like, it was always in my, my youth a question, why did my people why did they don't fight against the fascism? Why did they accept the Nazis and and be part of it uh, and of this of, of the Holocaust in some way? So when I I got in touch with the Spanish Civil War, which which is for European memory very important, big democratic memory, because there was a uh, there was a a land a people a government a democratic government who who decided not to, to resign, not to accept a, a fascistic military coup, but to, to defend democracy 
uh, and and uh, this was the beginning of the civil war, which is in some way for Europe a very uh, symbolic war, uh, in, in, in as, as a defense war against fascism. So when I came to Spain in the early 90s, I was really surprised that so many, especially young people, did not know anything about uh, the civil war. They did not speak about it. They did not speak about the Franco regime. And at the first, uh, the, uh, the beginning, I thought it was like ignorance and, 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 and kind of intellectual laziness. But then I, I realized it was the result of a, of a in some way, well-prepared strategy of the transition of the, of the, of the, of the moment of, of, of the end of the dictatorship and the beginning of the, of the Spanish democracy in 1975. Uh, where this pact of, of for, for, uh, forgetting uh, made that uh, there, was, there was no information for young people about uh, the dictatorship, about the republic, about the civil war. And uh, for me, it was really disappointing at the beginning in Spain. And then when they, at, like at the end of the 90s and the two, in 2000, especially when the first exhumation took part, I was really, really interested to get, uh, as a filmmaker, also to get in touch with those people who started as a civil society movement. It was not, it did not, it was not the government, it was not the political parties who started the exhumation, it was it was the relatives of the victims as a civil uh, society movement who started it and so I got in touch with them and I met Emilio Silva who is the president of the Association for the Recovery of Historical Memory and he uh, opened the first mass grave, the first exhumation of his grandfather uh, and this was like yesterday, it was uh, 20 years ago, the, the moment when they started the first exhumation. And he invited us uh, to join one of the first exhumations uh, near Madrid, in the, in the north of Madrid, in, near Burgos, to go to a little village and to be part, just to go there to look and be part of this exhumation. And we, uh, I and the Austrian filmmaker friend, uh, Herman Besetskas, we, we went there and we did not really know what we will encounter. And uh, so we got there and it was of, uh, it was 2003 and, and it was one of these first exhumations and, 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 and we found there a and, and, and very, very special atmosphere. It was like a binary atmosphere between fear and courage between uh, tension and relax, happiness, sadness. Uh, it was uh, unique. Uh, and and, and the, the first moment we decided we have to make a film about this moment because this is historical, it's a historical moment. People spoke the first time after 70 years of silence, uh, they, had to, they started to speak in public about their suffering, about their relatives, about the Franco terror because Still then, even in democracy, there were uh, a lot of fear uh, between people, especially in the villages, to, to, to speak about uh, the terror regime. And so we started, uh, because as filmmaker we had our cameras with us, we started to, to make interviews and uh, People, like Emilio Silva said from the beginning, opening a mass grave, opening uh, a mass grave is not just opening and, 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 and looking for the bodies, it's also opening the heart of the people, the mind of the people. Fear uh, disappears and the necessity of, of, of speaking out the, uh, the truth and, and, and also the they suffered their suffering uh, during so many years and we started the interviews and we decided also at the beginning to we have not just to to make a film about the exhumation but also we should go to the village and speak with the people there and in the first moment when we told the, the, the relatives of the victims in the exhumation that we wanted to go to the village they told us 
some of them told us don't do it maybe it could be dangerous for you uh, maybe people in the village especially the the relatives of the perpetrators will attack you there was still so many fear in the in the, in the minds of, of 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 the relatives of the weekends that we really it was impressive anyway we, we started to go to the village and speak publicly on the village places on the town place and the, and the streets about it and in, in some way doing the film we broke up the taboo which uh, was like 70 years in this village not to speak in public about what happened in, 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 in 36 and what happened with uh, this uh, executions and the, with this uh, mass graves and 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 victims of Frankism, and it showed also in the in the village that it was possible to speak in public. And this is one of the most important things of the exhumations in all of Spain, where they took place, because the uh, the relatives or the right wing are people who, who are oriented uh, like in, 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 in to the right-wing parties or who are still sympathizers with Frank regime, they always try to warn the other people not to speak about the past, not to uh, speak in public about the suffering because it could provoke tensions, it could provoke uh, hate between people and uh, the reality is as it shows also the film uh, that uh, exhumations and to speak about uh, what happened Franco regime is, a, is, is one of the, the necessary steps to, for reconciliation and, and uh, to get forward in, 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 uh, in life. So we, we did the film in the, in, the, in the village and in the exhumation. And as you see in the film, we got really different reactions. Also, which one of the most important moments is when, when these old guys did not answer our questions. The silence who was uh, present during so many years was still there. And it's still part uh, in Spain and in, in a lot of places. And, and when we showed the film later on uh, to the people of the of the village and the, and the villages nearby, it was a deep impact for them. But uh, most of the reactions were very very good, and and uh, yeah, this, the film is still used in a lot of places because uh, as we we tried to make. It's very impo also important. We try to make not an an, uh, an art uh, film uh, which has to go to festivals and has to be very nice and beautiful uh, artwork. No, we just wanted to make a really authentic through document. So you see the the phone in the film. We wanted to 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 be like a, a chronicle more than an than than an arty film because it was so necessary to give the voice to people who could not speak through, uh, through, uh, through so many years. And uh, this was our main intention to make a through document of testimonies of Franco repression and terror. Thank you, uh, Grimta. Um, I have, uh, if I may, Sandra, uh, or do you want to jump in? No, go ahead. Um, so, the, what what the film captures quite externally is this, the, as you said, now this this initial moment, right, of of opening up and and and, and uh, um, like people for the first time speaking about it, but also this incredibly eloquent silences, not that that speak volumes that you captured uh, so so extraordinarily. Uh, my question is. Uh, so this is, we are already 20 years into this new phase of recovery of historical memory. So our exhumations have taken place at different pace and different times also at, uh, during these last 20 years. Your film is from 2005. And how have things evolved I'm in, in terms of, um, of uh, on the one hand, you also have more government um, 
like from the from the Socialist Party, they took uh, a more active role. At this uh, initial part, there was barely anything. Um, but then, how have things um, changed? What is your perspective of how has uh, how has how have the exclamations impacted? Uh, this Spain's grappling with its past. And I'm saying this just one day after the far right um, um, had uh, a motion of no confidence in the Spanish parliament, which was on all headlines for in the Spanish media for two days. So what have these, uh, what has the memory movement contributed and whether we have more consensus nowadays than we had 15 years ago, or whether we are even more polarized than, than at that time? And it's a very good and important question. Uh, I think that the movement of the exhumation did uh, influence a lot in the Spanish contemporary politics. I think a political movement as movement or party as Podemos, which is now part of the Spanish government, is not uh, understandable without the civil society movement of the uh, Association for the Recovery of Historical Memory. Uh, not, not just because uh, some of the most important people in Podemos had a direct relation to, to this movement, but it was the first movement which uh, connected directly to the Spanish democratic past of the Republic without the, uh, the being, um, established parties like Socialist Party or Communist Party in Spain. It was an absolutely independent, uh, which lives on the um, courage and the, the enthusiasm of the civil association a society who thinks it's absolutely necessary to get a step forward in the democratic memory of, of the country. So I think uh, the influence was very, very strong in the first years till uh, the, during especially also the, the, the Zapatero, the, the, the socialist uh, government and, and between 2004 and 2000 they started uh, through the, the, the Socialist Party did this first um, law about uh, historical memory, which is, was a first step. It was not a, a, a very good law, but it, it was a first step. And, and then the conservative government after 2012 um, tried to, to, in some way, to stop this movement and, and to... to avoid the, the, the view uh, through uh, about the, uh, the past Spain and about the Franco terror. They think that the most, you, still, you told it before, the most important, the, the most uh, difficulty in Spain is that there is no agreement between the left wing and the right wing part in the parliament about what was the Franco regime and what was uh, the right-wing parties still, they, they condemn not Vox, which is the, the extreme right-wing uh, party now in Spain, in the, in, the, in the parliament, but the conservative party, they agree to condemn the Frankism as a dictatorship, but they don't accept the reality, the fact of, this, of the genocide, um, strategies uh, of that terror regime, that it was a very, very uh, brutal terror regime which killed hundreds of thousands of, of people and there are still uh, thousands of mass graves in Spain without recovering the, the bodies of the victims. So they cannot accept that, they, that the Franco regime uh, was uh, a, a regime really near to, to the Nazi regime. And, and this disagreement, which uh, does not exist, is, is brings to as, as a result a, a continuous tension in the society. So, if the if uh, 
like now there is there is uh, um, in all Europe in whole, whole Europe there is the appearance of the right extremely right wing parties uh, populist parties like in Spain Vox they try to use again this tension between left and, and right to to uh, produce the situation of fear uh, 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 and the look to the past. So in this moment, as I spoke with Emilio Silva, the president of the association uh, yesterday, he says, uh, we are not in a very good moment in, in this moment. It's, it's, it's uh, again, very difficult uh, to make exhumations. The new law is, is a law with too, too much fear. Which means that it's not a law who looks for justice. It's not a law who looks for uh, who searches uh, um, judges for the victims. It's the perpetrators are not present. It's, it's uh, the Spanish society does not face the fact that there was a brutal terror and the brutal terror was made from. Uh, perpetrators who in some way uh, has to be named and, uh, and there has to be a reparation for the victims in continuum with a kind of silence and uh, uh, this is a problem so the, the, there's a continuous tension between right and, 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 and left in Spain and it's more than just in different political views, it's in some way under the the surface of the of the different political uh, views. There's still a tension which came from a not agreement about the present. It's the problem for the future in Spain. I missed the very last uh, part of, of your phrase because there is, I don't know if I, it's me only who have the Did you problem with the audio, but it comes and goes. The thing is that if there is no, as the association says, in, as Leo Silva and, and the people of the association say, if there's not a, 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 a really We lost part we lost. of the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think it would probably try to reconnect. Uh, maybe we can ask him, yes, indeed, to turn his camera off so we can hear him, hear him better. It might be his internet connection. Yeah, I think that would be, that'd be good. Let's hope he can um, join us again. Yeah. Um, while we wait, Alejandro, I actually have a question for you. Um, that ties into that and to the silences uh, and some of the patterns that we saw in the film. And I think he is coming back into the chat room. I can see him at least. Gunther, can you hear us? You hear me again? Yes, we can hear you. And there you are again. Okay, good. So let's, let's finish with yeah. that. Uh, the, 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 the... Go ahead, Gunther, go ahead. No, the, just the, 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 the main problem is that uh, there is still no agreement and no recognition of the, uh, in, in the Spanish parliament between the parties about what happens in the regime, the final regime is a terror. And the problem is you have still more than 1,000, 100,000 victims in mass graves which are not exhumed which is, uh, means a lot of suffering a lot of families affected of it and if there is no agreement about we have to look on it as it was uh, this thing on the surface will continue in the Spanish uh, contemporary politics courage to yeah well uh, I think we it's clear what the, the, uh, 
it's too bad that, that the connection is is not working properly but yeah that's uh, that's that, that's clearly the, the the bottom line that there is no agreement of for regarding the exhumations and the work the, the, the importance of memory work um, on in Spain um, I think also that somehow there's there are these these two um, irreconcilable um, narratives at the at the core of the Spanish memory conflict right that the the, the center right people's party and I would also say that all the other center right party ciudadanos um, so they, they seem to be sticking to to the language of uh, of the transition, and uh, as if the country was still uh, on the brink of of, of a war, of fratricidal war. Um, they would claim that for for reconciliation to happen, one should not uh, drudge up the, the pain of the past. And the left highlights this. Uh, unaccounted uh, atrocities, right, that were committed by the regime, not only during the war, but also during the during the dictatorship. But on that, I would also like to point out to a fact that um, that there's one point where the memory movement's argument, I think, has a shortcoming, and I, I want to ask that to you, Günther, since you're close. With, uh, to the movement itself, and you've, you've known the movement well, that they will, when when the right brings up the killings in the Republican zone, which were massive as well, you know, that the estimate is at about 55,000. No one, den nobody denies that, even if somehow they're they're not really at the center of, of the discussion. But so the conservative will, will say, well, what about them? And then the 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 response that the memory movement gives. I find it often unsatisfying because they will say, well, they were sufficiently commemorated and honored during 40 years, during the 40 years that followed uh, after the, the civil war. But however, I, I wouldn't say that this is proper honoring of those of those crimes, since these people, and it was, as we know, it was a very broad swath of people that were executed in those zones, among them had definitely you have you had, had perpetrators and criminals, but then you had a lot of civil uh, society and individuals that were just belonging to uh, some of the uh, just to the conservative sectors or journalists of the ABC and things like that. So these people they were instrumentalized by Francoist propaganda. So can we really say they were honored and 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 recognized sufficiently? And that is something that is I feel when I look. Uh, and examine the the, the the Spanish memory conflict. This is something that somehow needs to be addressed in a different way if we want to come to some sort of consensus. We have to acknowledge that Francoist propaganda used this dead, the, 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 these killings, not the terror rojo, uh, as as part of, of of propaganda regime until the very end. So yeah, I just wanted to also to to bring that up. Gunther, if you could unmute yourself again, please. And, and maybe Gunther, just in case, if you turn off your camera, we'll make sure that the audio will come, will will be, uh, will be clear. I think that might help. Okay. okay. And maybe you can hear it better. Yes, I, I think you are right in this, uh, uh, Alejandro. The, the the problem is that. For example, for me, when I came to Spain, the only thing what I heard about the civil war uh, was that the rats had, as they called uh, them from the, from the conservative or fascistic parts or the, who came to Spain. And, and there was like, in the, in, in the collective memory, the image of, of more present than the other side. So uh, we had a lot of, of, of um, uh, monuments for the victims of the Republicans. You had three 
needs of, uh, of victims of Republicans. You had in every church in Spain, monuments and signs, symbols, uh, um, uh, memorizing uh, the, the victims of the, of the, of the Republicans. So the first step, I don't think the first step has to live the form young girls, uh, most of the young uh, Spanish people does not know anything about what was the Republic, what was the Democratic, uh, what was the mechanism of the Franco terror during the war and afterwards, all the things, there is no, still no information, there is still no education about it. And this should be the first step and this need it's uh, uh, from the, uh, of the Franco regime, the conservative party, from the right wing parties. They have to do this step, I think. Then the next step should be also to recognize the terror or the, or the, 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 the crimes of the, of the other side. But uh, the crimes of the other side are omnipresent in Spain in some way. Not now there's a new law, but when I did this, it, it was everywhere you could see this kind of memories. So it's very difficult, you are right, and, and it's, it's not easy, but it's absolutely necessary. But what exhumations show is if you do it and if you're confronted, there is no hate between people who, who, who fact, who, who, con, who, who faces the, the, the reality of a, of a mass grave and an exhumation. This is a healing process. This is the right way. Uh, to, to, to go to the step. But there were also exhumations of, of victims of, of the Republicans, not a lot, but, uh, but some of them. And, and, and there it was also a healing process. I think it's really interesting how this then brings about some kind of closure, even if we talk about how closure is unattainable, but in a certain uh, symbolical way and then in a very real way, it seems to be bringing intergenerational you know, not coming to terms with, because that is a, of course, very um, German uh, concept that we could talk about, but really this uh, understanding of what has happened and moving forward in this reconciliation, uh, perhaps phase that everyone is, is nervous about when the bodies are present all of a sudden, right? The, the, this argument that the wounds are open again uh, and could uh, stir up um, the ghosts from the pasts. I, I do want to be mindful of our time and give our um, participants uh, a chance to ask some questions as well. And you can use the chat to do that. This is a very rich conversation and there are many topics to talk about. And I uh, would like to encourage you if you have questions to use the chat function and to um, send us your questions um, as we continue our conversation and maybe while we, were, while we wait for that, and um, I'm going to ask the question of Alejandro uh, that um, I wanted to ask originally, and I see that we have again lost Gunther due to the um, weak um, internet connection that we're experiencing. Um, but think about this, this is a very international uh, panel that we're doing. So um, I wanted to, to ask you, Alejandro, because you talked about in, uh, in your article about how the Holocaust is a, is a bridging metaphor, but it's really more how it became, and you write a script for structuring and framing the events of the Spanish past. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, perhaps also with an eye to the film, and maybe there's some terms or terminology where this comes in in particular um, that you could elaborate on a little bit. Yes. Well, uh, the argument that, uh, that um, Nat and Snyder and I make in that argument um, is that uh, even if it's not explicit, uh, the Holocaust is um, an implicit presence in the Spanish uh, memory movement. And I would say that the, it's, not, it's not a coincidence, no? That, in the late 90s and early 2000s, we have this also increased centrality of the Holocaust in European memory politics. And that definitely contributed to, to raising awareness in, in the new generation of, of 
of activists, but also of scholars, of artists, of journalists regarding uh, Spain's uh, own uh, blood-soaked past. So it, it, I, I, there is this present, I mean, not, not only the Holocaust, I think also Argentina, but Argentina's um, uh, memorial initiatives, and I would say Argentina's traditional justice uh, process with uh, the Truth Commission and the Trials of the Juntas and the fight against impunity there. The concept of the Desaparecido had an enormous impact also in the memory movement. Emilio Silva, who was mentioned by, by Grinta, who's the, who's, who initiated, he's the grandson of, uh, of someone that was killed by, by the Franco regime in the early years of the Civil War. He writes an article that is of the seminar moment, it says, my grandfather was a desaparecido. But the desaparecido, if you look at Argentina, and this is also um, an argument we make in, in, in the book, is that um, the, the way Argentina looks back at its past with the desaparecido, this, the, 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 the sort of the, a, a victim that is only understood as a victim because uh, understanding victim as having, uh, as you know, a, 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 you know, a terror regime that has stripped them of their basic rights, regardless of, let's say, the, the political predicament in which these victims were um, were involved. With. I'm thinking of Argentina, particularly uh, those uh, in the case of the desaparecidos. The, the fact that the, the, this, uh, that, that the victims were part of um, social movements to a, to a great extent, or some were part of guerrillas, or some were part of, um, of uh, labor unions or of student unions. So the politics of the, and, um, of the events are somehow left aside and the victim is individualized. So that's where the Holocaust has, makes its present felt in, uh, in how, how, how memory of the past is brought back to life in Argentina's um, discourse in the 80s and 90s, and that transfers as well to Spain, where the, the, I, I would say, not, not with a critical uh, perspective, but it's a fact that under the cloak of memory, somehow the historical specificity of the events uh, gets lost. But um, on the other hand, it provides very strong uh, tropes, images, and. Um, uh, arguments uh, for uh, the memory movement, which is a very healthy development, both obviously in Argentina and Spain and anywhere else. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to save my follow up questions for for later to that because I see a, a number of questions coming into the to the chat and um, I wanted to start first with a question um, again to you Gunther. Uh, from one of the participants of if you have been back uh, to Santa Cruz and um, if things have changed now that we have another 15 years that have passed and generations uh, might have um, passed on. So the question is, how have things changed perhaps in Santa Cruz from your last time that you were there? If you could speak to that. Mm -hmm. Try it with the camera again. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm from the uh, from the film on. I, I there are some people for in the film, especially one of them, uh, Gonzalo, this this uh, forty years old farmer who who speaks about his own uh, relative and and uh, who speaks about the fear. And, and, and the military coup. He was he he gets he got a really close friend to me uh, during the, the the last fifteen years from the the film on, and I'm a lot of, um, many times I'm I'm there in in Barocondes, also in Santa Cruz, and I think the exhumations there were several exhumations in this zone. They did very they did very good for the for the people there. There are still there are still people on the which are relatives to the perpetrators, because the, the amazing thing is that in those villages, 
perpetrator and victims lived, or, or their, their relatives of the victims uh, lived during the Franco regime, like door, uh, door by door, uh, one house them and the, the other house the others. They had to live together. And, and maybe they, during 70 years, they, they almost did not speak to, uh, to each other. But the exhumation in some way uh, broke up, uh, not just the silence, but also the mistreating and, and people started to speak more with each other, especially the younger generations uh, got closer to, to each other. It's, it's, it, this is for sure one of the, of the good results uh, of, the, of the exhumations. Um, I think uh, like Gonzalo, this, this friend of mine there, and his sons, they live in, in some way with more freedom as before and with more inner peace as before. There are still families, there are still people who, who won't accept the fact of, of, of the truth about the Franco regime, which came out from the exhumation. But I think it's the, 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 the atmosphere in the villages, especially in Santa Cruz and Badocondas, is, is much better than before. It, 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 the, the process of the, of the exhumation and its results and, and all the process and all, all what happens uh, afterwards was, was a healing, was part of a healing. And I think, yes, it, it's, it's much better than before, uh, especially between the younger generation, uh, uh, like the relatives and families of the perpetrators and families of the of the of the victims. Perhaps it's very necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. as, a, as a short follow-up question to that, there's also a question in the chat about how this is dealt with in schools. Um, and from our conversation, I'm, I'm gathering that it's not part of the curriculum. Um, but if you wanted to or could speak to that. Yeah, the, the thing is, it's still, it, um, the, the new law, the law from 2005, 2006, the, 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 the new law for historical memory uh, recommends to teach about the civil war, the Franco regime, the Franco terror, but the reality in Spain is still that mostly the teachers and professors avoid this issue in order not to create tension uh, between uh, in, in, in the classes, or this is the reason, or, or that maybe uh, which happened because I, I, I was a lot in schools with these films and they, it's, it's possible that there are parents of, of the scholars, of the, of the pupils, of the students, which protests against the film like Santa Cruz because it, it should not be shown to the people because we should, you, the, the school is not a place to look to the past and, and, and whatever. Uh, it's, it's still difficult for teacher and professors uh, to speak about this issue in class because they can encounter uh, parents who protest against uh, this, and this is the, still the reality. And what the what what is the students in the film, this uh, medic medicine students, the film tells that their historical uh, classes uh, finishes up in the French Revolution is, uh, and, and it's, it's it's sad, but the reality is that it is still happens in uh, most parts of Spain. There's no education, uh, yeah. real education, in, uh, about about. Uh, so, uh, that, that, that there was a, it is a funny thing. Maybe it changed, but like five years ago, I was in the uh, the last time in the in the in the museum of Madrid, in the historical museum of Madrid, which is a big old palace, and they restored it uh, with a lot of money. And the exhibition of the histo history of Madrid ends at the beginning of the 20th centuries. There is no information about the civil war. There is no information about the dictatorship in the, in the, in the museum of historic, uh, historic museum of, of Madrid, which is really curious, but it says a lot about what happens in, in Spain uh, in, in relation to, to 
the Franco regime. Alejandro, did you want to add something? Just, uh, two things. Yeah, it's kind of sad to to um, to 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 learn. I thought there was. I mean, I've been out of the country for ten years now, but it's sad to see that. Uh, not not much has changed because when I went to school in the I was in high school in the 80s uh, we didn't see the civil war nor the dictatorship uh, there's there's a comment in the chat that Spanish students don't get past the French Revolution well we did we did we, we reached the first Spanish Republic in the you know late 19th century but no we didn't go much further so it's sad to to see that um, uh, that students nowadays, don't uh, get have there's not much progress I, but I would say there's also an additional problem in the Spanish uh, educational system broadly which is that it, it's completely decentralized by autonomous communities so then you have this enormous like asymmetries and certain regions are doing more than others and are teaching some uh, some of this curriculum uh, they're doing it in Andalusia for it they did it now possibly they did it less because it, uh, the government switched back to the right in Catalonia, they're doing, but then you also have uh, you have nationalist Catalan memory politics in those curriculums, and that gets uh, in, uh, entangled with um, uh, with the story. So there's it's not it's not only two narratives or one narrative and the opposition to that narrative. There's a multiplicity of uses and abuses of of this memory. You see that uh, uh, happening as well. So I think that doesn't really contribute to. To, um, uh, to a needed sort of baseline regarding education uh, about the civil war and Fran Francos. I think um, talking about this in schools and classrooms and seminars is really important. And apparently we are already past uh, the one hour time frame that we had set for our conversation this morning. Um, so, I would like to suggest that uh, those of you who are um, with us this, uh, this morning, this, this uh, afternoon, um, that you uh, perhaps take these uh, conversations back to your courses. Uh, I know uh, there are a number of Spanish uh, program students um, here and, and some of your professors. So I encourage you to continue this conversation uh, perhaps in your classrooms. Um, and I would like to thank our panelists for this conversation um, this morning. And I want to thank everyone for uh, their patience as well, uh, that uh, we uh, are uh, always counting on these days with webinars and being in cyberspace and, and not knowing uh, when our um, internet may be um, not functioning uh, properly. But uh, I want to thank you all for, for being here and to yes continue these conversations that's what i would like to encourage you to do in your in your classrooms um and uh, i hope we were able to provide some uh, new information on this topic that we haven't really uh covered in the institute um or i think uh, perhaps even at our university it hasn't been much that we've talked about and so um, i hope we can continue this because there has also been great interest uh, in, in this particular uh, topic. So thank you to our panelists. Thank you to Alejandro. Thank you uh, to Gunta, who is um, now going into the evening, <laughs> I believe, in Madrid. And uh, to all of you, um, thanks so much. Have a good rest of the day, and we will uh, talk to you soon. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, Sandra and Gunta.